Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh brothers and sisters Welcome to another fresh episode of Ramadan Mutahir With you and me and of course my guests I am Siddat Muhammad and alongside me is a man you've seen before And he's here with me again Ustaz Yusuf, assalamu alaikum Wa alaikum assalam alhamdulillah Thank you so much for being here again Alhamdulillah MashaAllah And uh, right next to me is Sister Halima Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh I am Halima Roji and I run the brand Paramount Universal Limited. Now, Thank before you. I allow her to give you the its and bits, we'll have to go on a break. And as soon as we're back, we'll continue with the show. So do stay tuned. Welcome back from the break. Now, if there's one thing I'd love you to do is follow us on our social media platforms. And of course, also ask yourself this question real quickly. What do you do when you expect something, but then it doesn't come? How do you react to this? We'll find out. But without any further ado, let's move on to our sermon session with Ustaz Yusuf here. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah ba'd. So inshallah today we're going to be talking about trust in perspectives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran and as well Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have encouraged the Muslims to be trustworthy. So trust is actually al-amana in Arabic word and this is the work we use in Islam, al-amana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, Inna Allah ya'amurukum an tu'addul amanati ila ahliha. Allah has ordered you to give amanat, trust, to the owners. Meaning that when you are entrusted with anything, when it is time for you to return the trust, with the whole of your mind, return the trust to the owners. Because not returning the trust means that on the al qiyamah you have to return it with your good deeds, your salawat, your fastings, your ibadat. Trust can come in different perspectives. One of it is responsibility. When you are given a responsibility in a society, in a state, in a country, over an affair, you should know in your mind you are being given a trust. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question you about that trust. Another perspective of trust is al-amanatul maliyah. Trust in terms of wealth and property. Somebody has entrusted you with an amount. Keep this for me. If you cannot keep it, please tell the person I cannot keep it. If you can keep it, keep it and don't touch it. When it is time to return it, you return it. That is to keep an amana. The Messenger of Allah said, Adil amanata ila mani itamanak. Return amana to the one who has entrusted you with it. Do not betray anyone that betrays you. Don't say because the government is not giving me my rights. So after all, I'm now in the position to steal the money. So I'm going to steal it. That is betrayal of Amana. Do not betray anyone that betrays you. Muslims need to learn a lot and really put this in practice so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can reward us both in the world and in the hereafter. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us our shortcomings and reward us abundantly. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah, thank you so much for the sermon, youngsters. Now, before we move on to our next segment, I'd just like to ask, um, I want to have suya tonight, right? And I don't have a chef. What major spice would you recommend for me to use? 
I would recommend our grilled joe so that is GRG and sauce and marinade. The two combo is amazing. It Quite actually takes your protein from level zero to level zero. Uh, Sirs, are we on this tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on to our uh, Let's Cook segment and find out what our chef has for us. Stay tuned. This is Ramadan Mutakhir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another excited episode of Let's Cook on Ramadan Mutahir. I am your chef, Chef B, and today I'll be making assorted pepper sauce that will be suitable for any parboiled rice or parboiled spaghetti. So let me introduce you to my ingredients, vegetable oil, pepper sauce, assorted, sliced onion, bay leaf, seasoning powder, curry, thyme, oyster sauce, dark soy sauce, and crayfish. I'll be right back. So let's cook. We'll start by adding the vegetable oil. So that's it. The next thing, I'll be adding my sliced onion. I want it to cook together with oil. Give it a good stir. So that's that. After that, I'll add in some bay leaves just to give us a nice aroma. Look at that. So next, I'll be adding my pepper mix. This is tomato, onion, rodo, and bawa boiled. That's fine. Next, I'll add in the thyme. And of course, the curry will go into it also. Give it another good mix. Mm. So next, I'll add in the seasoning powder. Like that. Give it another good mix. Mm. So after this, the assorted sauce will go into it. Already parboiled and seasoned well. So give it another good mix. And next, the oyster sauce just to enhance the taste. Just a little bit of it. That's all. And the last thing I'll be adding is my crayfish already rinsed. You see that? So, just look at that. So I'll just allow to cook for like two to three minutes. Then our salted pepper sauce is ready, wife time. I'll be pairing this with boiled basmati rice. So I'll be putting my sauce in this fried bowl. This is a very good iftar idea meal. You can pair with either spaghetti or as seen in the video. If you are just joining us, we made assorted pepper sauce for today's iftar. So just look at that. This is what we have here. Here is our iftar idea meal for today. Assorted pepper sauce paired with white basmati rice. This is a very nice meal idea for today's iftar. You can also follow us on whole platform at the Huma Network and you can follow me on Instagram at Chevy Catering Services. Ramadan Mubarak. See you guys on next episode.
Welcome back, and that was Let's Cook. Quite interesting with the chef. Amazing combo right there. And for those of you who might have missed it, I'll say it again. Ramadan Mutahir has this for you to re-watch and, of course, relearn what ingredients have been given. And, of course, you can make that dish as much as you want. Don't miss out on it. But right now, we're moving on to the second topic of the day with our guest, of course, um, Sister Halima. My topic is healthy eating habits with living in your reality changes Ramadan and beyond, irrespective of the current economic situation. When it comes to LD eating habits, it does not have to, it does not really have to be very expensive. Mm. You might actually do with what you have available in, the, in your garden or in your kitchen. Just ensure that your meals have the balanced diet, the likes of your protein, your carbohydrate. But they tell you some people tell you, I'm on diet, I don't take carbohydrate. The gist is, you actually need carbohydrate to function well. You need energy. To function well. So just to ensure that probably you want to make rice for your family, you want to make pasta for them. It is not a big deal when you had your veggies to eat. So imagine just having your green pea or your carrots or your green peppers in your spaghetti, in your pasta or in your rice. They're making a nice stew alongside with it. So it actually changed the main menu from being just bland rice, but it's actually fortified with veggies, the likes of carrots and all like that. And like now, we know the current situation of things in Nigeria it's got food. Yes, food are expensive, we know. Which is why I said living in your reality while you eat healthy. I think you can get a carrot of 150 naira now. So 150 naira carrot, you can actually use it twice. It's not, it, is not, it is not just about having all the carrots in your dishes. You might just have them in chunks and divide. Probably tomorrow you want to make um, pasta, like I said, or you want to uh, cook rice today. So just take rice today. And one of the beautiful ways to actually pre uh, preserve your carrot so it doesn't actually go with that or just get really soft is keep it in water then you can actually use it very fine the other day. Alima, at this point where you say, you know, we should keep the carrots, some of us, our wives would say they want all the carrots. <laughs> what, what do we do at that point? Yeah, it's, actually, it's actually nice. As long as there's no wastage, and you're not wasting it, and she's actually creative what she wants to make the carrots. Probably she wants to munch on it, or add it to other dishes, or mm. actually, actually want to juice it, or make smoothies with it for the kids or herself. Then mm. it's fine. Thank you so much for the time, uh, Sister Halima, and thank you so much, Saz Yusuf, as well. We'll be moving on to our next segment, which is Sheikh Speaks. And as soon as we're back, we'll continue with the show. This is Ramadan Mutahir. Do stay tuned. <laughs> Marriage is a union of two people who come together with the hopes and expectations that they will be together with their confidant, their best friend, their lover. Um, for me, I see my husband as my brother as well, um, the person I can be myself around, the person who knows me better than anybody else in the world, and the person whom I keep no secrets from. So for me, marriage is just one of those things I feel that completes us as people, um, because uh, Allah has prescribed marriage and Allah doesn't make mistakes and I know that feeling of peace and tranquility that you have when you get married so when I say complete I don't believe my husband completes me I feel the union completes me it makes me just feel safe it makes me feel you know that there is dignity in my life and alhamdulillah well once you know there's um, you know you're ready I believe strongly in istihara I feel start that istihara from the onset um, and then when you're faced with choices of course you do istihara but let Allah put his stamp let his um, let him put his baraka in this prospective union and guide you in your proper selection so I would say more than anything um, we need to first of all have an open mind and an open heart um, let us not have conditions that we have set that this I have a wish list and it's 50 you know points then this person must have all these things otherwise I'm not going to marry them it's important we have realistic expectations um, we first need to be right before we look for Mr. or Miss Right and uh, if we don't have ourselves in order it's so easy to fall for anything so you need to know yourself you need to know your strengths and then you need to know what you like and what you don't like so that you don't compromise so you don't settle um, I believe strongly that the advice I give a lot of people who want to get married is don't be so desperate that you're ready to compromise on your values and on your principles because those are most likely the things that will destroy your marriage. Um, don't 
go for somebody who you think after the marriage you will work on or will get better. Whatever you see beforehand, let it be what you are okay living with for the rest of your life. Because if it turns out that that thing you wanted to change doesn't change after the marriage, unfortunately, you're faced with a big challenge. So don't marry a potential, don't marry a work in progress, I say. Marry somebody as they are and you're okay with them as they are. If Allah says we have created for you mates, of course the man is the head of the household, but Allah is not referring to mates as anything that we won't take seriously. Um, your mate, if you think of your classmate, he's your, this is your companion, your friend. <laughs> Welcome back from Sheikh Speaks. This is Ramadan Matahir. Still here with you is Sadat Muhammad and of course my guests, Ustaz Yusuf and Sister Halima. Thank you so much for being here. Alhamdulillah. Now the word of the day today is expectations. There's one thing about expectations. There's one thing about anticipating what someone has maybe promised you or maybe putting trust into someone, which we spoke about with Ustaz earlier. So I'll start off with Ustaz here to discuss the Islamic outlook towards expectations and especially even looking at um, expecting something from Allah you know someone would pray and say oh I, I asked Allah for this but he never gave me anything or you know I'm, I, I've been praying time and time again but I've never really received anything and I'm already 30 years I'm 40 years I still haven't seen that so do I lose trust in him do I expect or do I just you know let go what can you say about this yeah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah ba'd you see expectations um, as Muslims we keep expecting from Allah. And while expecting, we have something in our mind as knowledge. And that is, if Allah gives us, yes, we say Alhamdulillah. Mm. If Allah does not give us, that does not mean our prayers are not being answered. At times, Allah may use your prayer to block an eventuality that is coming in the future. Maybe an accident, maybe a problem, maybe a difficulty in the future. Allah doesn't want that to happen to you. You are praying for something else here. Mm. The prayer is taken to block that. And you feel your prayer is not answered. The prayer is answered already. Only if Allah makes you to see what he has actually done with your prayer. Then you end up saying, Alhamdulillah. So you have it in mind that only if Allah wills, he will be able to do it. Definitely. If it is not in the color of Allah, then uh, he won't be able to do it. Quite then you, you'll be good. Just like I said in uh, the earlier episodes, say Alhamdulillah at most times, even though you might not be too sure of certain things, just say Alhamdulillah, because there's a whole lot that has been done for you, but you might not just realize it early enough. Brothers and sisters, we'll be moving on to our next segment, which is Instructional Quran, and as soon as we're back, we'll be having a wrap up. Stay tuned. This is Ramadan Mutahir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to the instructional Quran segment of the Ramadan Mutahir show. I am Ustaz Jamal Sheath. Uh, like we do always on instructional Quran, we bring instructions from the glor glorious Quran and then we kind of explain them and see how we can draw some gems of benefit from them uh, that would benefit me, the speaker, and those of you who are at home listening and watching. So today we're gonna to be starting with the very interesting one. Allah says in the Quran, say, do not become divided. This is Quran 3 verse 103. Allah says, Allah says, hold fast together to the cable of Allah and do not be divided. Remember the blessing that Allah bestowed upon you. You were one's enemies, then he brought your hearts together so that through his blessings you became brothers. You stood on the brink of a pit of fire and he delivered you from it. Thus Allah makes his signs clear to you that you may be guided to the right way. So Allah here is pretty much saying that we have to be united as a Muslim body. We have to come together. You know, Allah says, And join together, hold on to the rope of Allah, to the single thread that joins us together and do not become divided. Because the moment you are divided, 
then the enemies can actually destroy you. You know, the interesting thing about um, coming together as a group is that you become f form formidable and, and fortified and have a strong front against external attacks. Uh, Muslims in the past, you know, um, were punished for not being united you know, in the past, and then, you know, you, we, all, we all know what happened to the Islamic, you know, civilizations of the past and how they, you know, just fizzled away, you know. Uh, for over a thousand years, the most prominent culture and civilization was the Islamic civilization that gave birth to even modern science, modern technology, and so many, so many fronts, you know, from biology to physics to mathematics, and you know, quite all these beautiful disciplines that the Muslims, you know, um, put their, their work and efforts in in the past. But the moment they became divided, what happened, that civilization was pretty much was, was, was brought to an end. And you, know, you now have fragments of it in different parts of the world. Um, so it's important that we Muslims become, divide, become united, you know, Allah is, as Allah is, you know, has uh, pretty much enjoined and, and instructed us. He also said, Also remember Allah's blessings upon you when you were all divided and enemies and he brought your hearts to, together under the banner of Islam. Before Islam, many nations were divided, you know, into tribes and, 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 and groups and cultural groups and people were saying, no, yeah, we cannot do with these people. We cannot relate with them. But Islam has joined a large swath of humanity together under one umbrella, you know, from the Euphrates to, to the Indian Ocean, you know, pretty much a wide, vast area of the Islamic nation which is called Darul Islam in the past. Um, so Allah is pretty much saying that we have to come together so that our, our hearts can be forged as one. And, and then this would also save us from the fire because when you're divided and then, you know, so many problems happen in the Muslim community and then so many, you know, fahsha and, and all kinds of unwanted things would happen and we might, you know, be closer to Allah's Jahannam as we should not be. So may Allah protect us from that. From that, Allah says, "Kathalika yubinu Allahu lakum ayati la ilakum tahtadun." The unification of of the hearts. Allah is saying that's a sign upon you, that's a sign onto you from us that Allah is on the throne, that Allah works wonders, that Allah makes miracles. Because it's really hard for people to be united. Only Allah can make people united, but we also have to have to put in some efforts to make sure that happens, so that Allah can finally bless it. So I pray that Allah, through these uh, this, this holy month, we can become united, you know, to bring forth Allah's Allah's glory unto the world, and so that we can also bring forth, you know, the benefits of unity unto the world. Unity is the, the only way to go. Without unity, humanity cannot forge ahead. Without unity, even Muslims for, for certain cannot forge ahead. So we have to come together in solidarity and build a formidable Islamic nation. So Allah is saying that, and that's uh, pretty much the wrap for uh, this segment of the show, Instruction of Quran on Ramadan Matahir. I am Ustaz Jamal Sheath. I will be seeing you some other time. Mar salam. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Don't forget, follow us on our social media platform. This is Ramadan Mutahir. I am Sadat Muhammad, and thank you so much, uh, uh, Ustaz Yusuf. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you so much, Sister Halima. And as you know, as I would say, we'll prepare for a fresh episode just for you and for you to take home with a whole lot of information as well. This is Ramadan Mutahir. We'll be seeing you soon. Wassalamah.